there are, there are a couple of remaining items on my agenda of thanks uh, today. One is, uh, you heard earlier me talk about the partnership that we have forged as part of this work with the law enforcement community in this area. Uh, we've talked with the schools and the school resource officers and the contributions they've made to the success of PCAT. Uh, we've talked about how we've interacted with the sheriff's office. And the last of our law enforcement brothers and sisters that we want to uh, commend, thanks, and congratulate for the role that they have played is, of course, our very own Memphis Police Department. Um, they do the work that we want them to do whether we like it or not. And sometimes some of us don't agree with what they're doing. And sometimes we don't think they're doing things the way they should be. But from where I sit on a day-to-day -day basis, working with children and families who are at risk of going into the system, I cannot imagine trying to do this work without being in partnership with them. We do an awful lot of meetings and trainings and discussions with them about the challenges from their side, the challenges from the side of the youth, and they have been very, very good partners, as far as I'm concerned, in helping us to create and forge a new kind of relationship in the juvenile justice system. And so I am pleased to, to bring up right now uh, my old friend, because we've been through a lot of this stuff together, uh, Chief Mike Robb to come up and accept on behalf of the Memphis Police Department our Community Champion Award for the work that is going on in juvenile justice reform that could not be done without the input of the Memphis Police Department. Uh, on behalf of Director Rawlings, who's in an airplane right now heading back to Memphis, he's been in the conference the last few days. Uh, he hates that he missed this, uh, because working with you is a passion of his, and it is a passion of ours in the Memphis Police Department. I heard a young man say one time that uh, his mother did all he, she could do, but she got put into a system. And as a result of that, he and his sister got put into a system. Fast forward, he grew up, became an adult, and one day got a knock on his door, and his sister, who was in a system, had a child, and there was a social worker and a police officer standing at the door with this little baby. And they said, if you don't adopt your little child that your sister gave, uh, this little child will again be put into a system. And this young man stepped up and adopted the child, and they're doing great today. But he broke that path by dropping those chains that we call a system. And we learned things in law enforcement that we should have, should have learned years ago. Uh, that children do need a pathway to break the chains of the trauma that they see and experience so that they can drop those chains that we have called a system so that they can be productive and admire the life that we want them to admire in this future. And our police department in Memphis wants to be a part of that change and working with groups like Dr. Stewart and UT and the many, many, many women that I see in front of me, we just want to be a part of that program. So thank y'all so much for this award. Well, the next gentleman I'm going to invite up said, I'm not going to be deterred. I'm going to keep pursuing this lady until I get her. And uh, he had the good sense, I must say, to hire somebody who had the secret to getting to me. And so he sent his spy in to make the contact and say, oh, please, Dr. Stewart, you have to talk to him. He's the real deal. 
And I'm so glad that he pursued me to get our assistance in helping with what his dream is. Uh, and I decided when we were putting together the list of people that I thought as we are ending this and getting ready to go into the next version, that I wanted to highlight the work of someone who has come to this saying, I will make my system do a better job for kids and families. And, and so I want to bring up Dr. Eric Harris, who is uh, the principal at Jeter Elementary, who has... decided to use his leadership and, and his bully pulpit as a principal to create a trauma-sensitive, trauma-aware, trauma-responsive system within that school. And when, when he finally caught me and got me to sit down and talk with him, and I began to hear what he was trying to do with just minimal things, just, just a little of this and a little of that, and all he really wanted from me was a little help with figuring out how to make it all work, which is kind of what I do. But I felt so bad that I had been so hard to catch uh, that we spent a couple of hours, he and his leadership team. And when I tell you that someone who came to this without a lot of resources and just a bit of knowledge and a desire to do something different, how big a difference that can make in a system you just heard uh, Chief Ron talk about the system that gobbles kids up. His system is not going to gobble the kids up. His school is going to be a model for a trauma-responsive school right here in Shelby County. And so, Dr. Harris, I could not resist. I could not resist offering you this Community Champion Award for creating a trauma-informed school here in Shelby County. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Dr. Stewart may have just embellished just a little bit in that. <laughs> Chasing her, I found, is a, there's two different types of runners. You can be a sprinter or you can be a marathon runner. And you definitely have to be a marathon runner. And I don't mean a mile or two miles, but it was definitely worth it because this, she wears a lot of hats. And I am so just happy with her involvement. I'm so happy with the work that we're doing in our schools. Uh, just to quickly tell you, I know you watch a lot on the news. You've heard a lot about schools and the state of what we're doing. You see that this is this focus, that focus. Students aren't learning, parents aren't doing this, parents aren't doing that. The problem is we don't get to the root cause. And what the root cause is, is the social emotional health of our kids. Um, we cannot change where they grow up. We can't fix the things that they are exposed to, but we can help them to cope with it and learn to be stronger because of it. And that's the work that we're trying to do um, at our school. Until we drop the concept of changing how we approach academics will never really truly turn around our school system. We have to look at why is it the academics aren't working and it's because of their social emotional health. Um, just real quick, my school is very important to this work. Um, I've found that where we are, we are just the perfect place to do and to get it started. I, I don't know why we wouldn't. Uh, because the area code that we're in, 38109, uh, which is out Whitehaven near Westwood, uh, and some of the highest rates of anything negative you can think about occurs in that zip code. And if you think about it more, Memphis, the city of Memphis has a great campaign. Uh, Memphis is 901, and you see all these t-shirts and everybody's there and they're the 901. Where my school is, they refer to themselves as the 109 because it's the 38109. Well, if you look at the juxtaposition of those two words, 901, what is that? That's comforting food, right? It, it's very soulful music. It's, it's a greatly fast growing footprint of the city. But when you look at the 109, it's discomforting power. It's, 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 it's trauma sensitive, just, it's trauma hitting you. Um, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional thinking about this. Um, it's everything that's opposite of that. It is. It's um, a decrease in economic um, involvement as well. It's all of these negative things, and it's almost the total opposite that if you lined up the 911 with the 109, everything is just total opposite if you went down the list. And that's why we're the place for this work. So I want to thank you again for helping us with this. Um, and forgive me, as you said, Dr. Director Rawlings is on a plane. I just got off the plane uh, to get here, but it was definitely worth the effort. So I thank you so much for allowing me to come here today. And I look forward to our work together. You know, it is that that inspires me and, and encourages me to keep doing this work. To see people like Dr. Harris who just decided it's time to just do it. And we became the model for Nike, just do it. Uh, and I, I hadn't thought of the 901, 109, uh, but you're right. Everything that we talk about when we see the Chamber's promotional about 901 Destination City is the exact antithesis of what the kids and families in 109 live every day. Uh, and maybe we should do something with that as we move forward with PCAT, uh, the next iteration. The final people I'm going to ask to come up are our last partners, Sent, Compass, the Healing Center, and Faces of Memphis, uh, because we've already talked with the uh, juvenile court at Shelby County School. So if Mona, are you still here? Yeah. Mona, come up from FACES, uh, Kim and Lisa from Compass Intervention Center, and Jim Ward from Ascent. If you, if you remember from my conversation this morning, we have had the good fortune of having five groups with us from the beginning the Shelby County Schools and the Juvenile Court as the sites where we conducted our work, and, and these three agencies as the partners who did the work that has made all of today possible, who were the, the people who persisted when we weren't sure what we were doing, the people who overcame the challenges that we face when you're dealing with systems like schools and juvenile court, um, and the folks who just wouldn't give up. So I want to thank them as a group and individually. Uh, we have PCAT Partner Awards for Faces of Memphis. And for anybody who does not know, I should probably tell you a little bit about you and Faces. Uh, you've heard a lot today from Melanie and me about family support specialists. In Shelby County, if you want to be a family support specialist, you have to connect with uh, unless you want to travel outside of the city. You have to connect with this lady to my left, Mona Ford, who is the director of the FSS training program at FACES, Family Advocate Center and Empowerment Services. Family Advocate Center and Empowerment Services of Memphis, FACES of Memphis. It's a family support organization that is a chapter of the National Federation of Families for Children's Mental Health, which is the certifying body that Melanie talked about in her presentation this morning. We have a local group that's part of that national organization. We are somebody, okay? We are somebody. And they have contributed greatly. For those of you who plan to hire an FSS, they're gonna be trained by these folks. For those of you who want to know more about uh, FSSs and get maybe get training as an FSS, these are the people you need to talk with. They conduct a monthly lunch and learn on a variety of topics that are important to this kind of work uh, that offer practical information, everything from expungement to understanding the justice system to financial literacy and a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, so Mona, if you would come up and accept this uh, PCAT Partner Award. And uh, we thank you. We thank Pastor, uh, this is the Healing Center Church Pastor Diane Young and Bishop William Young, if y'all listen to the radio on Sunday morning. Sometimes they make me come and talk about this work. Uh, you said that's right. <laughs> but, but we thank you for this. Thank you. <laughs> does not want to speak. Okay. And uh, next up we have my, my, my two partners uh, in crime from Compass Intervention Center. I've got Lisa Smith, who is the CEO.
ago. And uh, Kim Jones, who I talked about earlier, and some of you were in the breakout with her, uh, who have been tremendous in helping us to create the screening program, to train on the screening program, to work with us on evaluating the effectiveness of the screening program, and a whole lot of other things. Plus, they are darn good service providers in the community. So, our PCAT partner award for accomplishment.
that, that's just not right. <coughs> um, so in 1991, I read a book uh, called There Are No Children Here by Alex Kotlowitz, and it was the story of uh, Lafayette and Barrow, and they were brothers growing up in one of those projects, and as I read that book, I departed it, as I finished it, I, I left with the feeling that I'm supposed to do something with this. I didn't know what that was, and it took me a time to find it, uh, but that's played out here. And we are not in 312, we're in 901, but through this work that we have done, it has been become so evident to me that I'm exactly where I need to be, and my company is honored to be doing this work here. Uh, we look forward to partnering with as many people as possible because the bottom line is we have no room for competition. The need is too great. We have to create the village that will support this work moving forward and continue to collaborate and go at it hard. So thank you.